Hello, hello everybody, this is TipTopMTG here today with another Magic the Gathering Arena video. In today's video, I am breaking down the MTG Arena state of the game for Strixhaven School of Mages. So essentially, what state of the games are, are big announcements from Wizards of the Coast about things coming to Magic the Gathering Arena in an upcoming update. So for instance, this update will happen on the 15th of April, so that'll be happening in just over a week. So we're going to break this down. However, we also got the announcement article for the week, which happens every single Wednesday, and some card-specific notes. We have three different articles we're breaking down today. But really quickly, before we even break down these articles, I want to talk about the difference between State of the Game and Arena Announcements. Arena Announcements are kind of this new thing where every Wednesday they kind of do this little update thing where they talk about new things coming to the store, maybe some events, stuff like that. It's much smaller. And they said they were going to continue to do State of the Games. And I predicted, hey, with every standard set release, we are going to get essentially a State of the Game where they're going to announce big features, new things like that, uh, and kind of give us a roadmap ahead. Because in the past, we used to get a State of the Game every month. So if you look at any of my previous State of the Game videos, I would say State of the Game for January 2021, which was our last one. Uh, but now what it looks like, it'll be for only set releases and other big announcements. And they talk about that a little bit in this article. One thing I am disappointed about is if we look at this article, we don't have like a you know, what's coming up, like, I, I am going to break this down, but, um, there's no, like, roadmap, which generally, how State of the Games worked was for every single standard set release, there would be a roadmap, so it's a little weird we don't have that, but, uh, that's fine, let's jump right into this, because we have a lot to talk about, so I'm going to read through it, give you my thoughts and opinions, and maybe give you some information you didn't already have. The new Strixhaven School of Mages set releases on April 15th, so school will be in session. Get ready for a new plane, several new mechanics, and a library full of ancient and powerful spells. Like every new set, it also brings new packs to the store, new draft and sealed formats, and exciting new events. Strixhaven is known for its five colleges, and there are sleeves for each of them. I posted about this a while back on my community page, but if you didn't see it, you can use these codes, Debate Duelists, Swamp Punks, Math Wizards, Art Club, and Rock Jocks, to get five sleeves. And these aren't the sleeves, it doesn't have text on it, but they are these characters, like, in a big kind of form. Either way, it's very similar to these, they look better. So yeah, you can get some free sleeves by using these codes in the MTG Arena store. If you are on mobile, unfortunately, you cannot do that in the MTG Arena app, and instead have to go to accounts.wizards.com uh, and enter it there. So yeah, just keep that in mind, these are completely free. So if you don't have any sleeves, you can pick some up for free. Either way, let's jump into this. By the way, I did skim this. I did not read every single bit of it, so you'll get some parts of it, me already knowing what's in it, and some parts of this video being new stuff to me. Uh, so yeah, the College Cup. The Colleges of Strixhaven have always competed fiercely, and a few weeks after the set launches, this competition will come to MTG Arena. A series of events will challenge players to compete in various formats and represent their college of choice. So these are the festivals. Uh, introduced way back in technically Corset 2020, uh, or War of the Spark even, with War of the Spark Chronicles, uh, and kind of rebranded as festivals with Throne of Eldraine, these are coming back as College Cups, which essentially are different formats that often offer uh, styles, probably for the Mystical Archive cards, uh, the Japanese versions, and also, you know, their events, uh, and they oftentimes have avatars as well. So, yep, a series of events to challenge players. There will be three ways to score points for your favorite college during these events. Adding sleeves on your deck that are from the quiz above, using an avatar from your college through the Mastery Web, which is normally called Mastery Tree, and bringing the tome from your college, the pet available through the Mastery Pass. The more items you bring, the more points your college score. So I interpret this one of two ways. Either this is going to apply to every game you play, or more likely, when you go into these festival events, depending on what sleeve, uh, avatar, and pet you're using, you will earn points for that um, kind of house. So if you've seen Harry Potter, essentially, like, as they win, you know, answer questions right, and as they win Quidditch games, they earn house points, and at the end of the thing, like, one house wins. And so this is what's going to be happening here, and they say at the end of the competition, all players will receive a reward commemorating the victorious college. Make sure to compete, represent your class classmates well and push your college to victory. So I'd like a little bit more information on this because it says a series of events. So I assume it's going to be events, but you probably have to pay to enter. And if you do, that means the people paying to enter get to choose. And I also don't know if you have to pay to enter to get those rewards or if it's just all players. It does say all players, but maybe they mean all players participating. Uh, either way, that means even if you, you know, represent Quandrix and Prismari ends up winning, you will just get Prismari based, um, 
you know, reward. So essentially you should be getting stuff for free, which is pretty exciting, uh, but we'll have to see how that really works. I think it's really interesting and a way to encourage people to play, to show off their Strixhaven stuff and gives the more stuff to the community. So I actually think this is really awesome. Unless you have to pay for these events and you can't really do much of it without investing coins into uh, cosmetics. All right, Return of the Sealed Arena Open. The College Cup isn't the only competition coming with the release of Strixhaven. We'll also be running another Arena Open, which is a highly competitive tournament that you have to be at least 18 to play. Uh, and essentially what it is, is you can actually earn real money up to $2,000. Uh, so you'll play through day one. If you qualify into day two, you'll play day two. Uh, and they are doing Sealed. They've done Constructed Standard, Constructed Historic, and now they are doing Sealed with Strixhaven. I'm going to skip a lot of this. Um essentially there's going to be best of one and best of three and the reasoning for for day one at least um you know i'll read through <laughs> Mm, let's read through it. Okay. We saw an incredible response to Kalbheim Sealed Arena open, and we think Strixhaven and its mystical archives will make for a more exciting sealed environment. For those of you who don't know, the mystical archives are in packs, and if you open them in sealed or draft, you do get to use them in your deck. So you might be playing, you know, a sealed deck with Demonic Tutor in it. So pretty cool. Uh, similar to Kalbheim, we will be running our normal best of one sealed event a bit longer, right up until the arena opens, so players have a good venue to practice. Um, this is the one part I didn't see, so I said I should read it, but. Never mind, I understand what they're saying now. Essentially, uh, normally Sealed is only available when a set launches, and it's only available for a short period of time. However, they're extending that period of time so that it goes right until the arena open starts. And the reason for that is that you can use it as kind of practice for the arena open, because it is a pretty big uh, deal, uh, and so it might be something you want to practice for. So that's pretty awesome. I think having more time for each event is good no matter what the reason is, and the fact that it is such a good reason is pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, next we have Campus Guide, one of the most prestigious schools of magic, uh, of magical throughout, the, throughout the universe. Um, oh my god, I'm so dumb. <laughs> most, of the, the most prestigious schools of magical thought in the multiverse. I was like, throughout? That's not throughout. Either way, Strixhaven has several new things to teach us. You can study up all the new mechanics and details, but read on for some details. So, um, you know, I'm not going to talk about the mechanics necessarily and how they work here, because I've done lots of videos covering those. I've actually a dedicated video to it, but they're going to talk about how this works in Magic Arena. Mana value is a new term, but a familiar mechanic. It means the exact same thing as converted mana cost, and always has, and it will replace all aspects of it, even on cards that are not printed in Strixhaven. So, for instance, Elspeth Conqueror's Death, which has exiled target permanent and opponent controls with converted mana cost 3 or greater, will say with mana value 3 or greater now, even though it was never reprinted with that text. Uh, we've seen a couple versions of this um, already, and it'll be interesting to see, um, kind of like... It'll be interesting to see if how all these cards look with like all the little changes. Activate only has sorcery, and they don't mention anything about this, but there are lots of little word changes. Either way, learn and lesson. Learn is a new keyword action that lets you discard a card to draw a card, or more interestingly, reveal a lesson card from your sideboard and put it in your hand. Lesson is a new card type in Strixhaven, and they will provide a wide variety of effects that you can call on when you need. Um, one thing I do want to mention is the MTG Arena cards will have this little symbol on the upper left, so that's pretty cool. The new mechanic has prompted two important changes in MTG Arena. First, you can now view your sideboard mid-match to check which lessons are there. That is awesome, meaning that if you're in a game, even if you're not using lessons, if you're using anything that cares about your sideboard, you can at any time just look to see what's there. Uh, so if I want to say, hey, what's in my sideboard? Is there something I do want to learn for? And second, there are more detailed changes happening. So essentially what is happening is that in best of three, you will still have a 15 card sideboard, but in best of one, you will have seven cards because in best of one, you don't actually sideboard. Your sideboard is actually a wish board, meaning the only reason you have anything in your sideboard is if it's a companion or if you are tutoring from your, uh, library. And this is actually a massive nerf to a lot of cards. I mean, Karn used to be so awesome because he, you could have 15 different artifacts that all deal with 15 different situations. Now you can only have seven unless you're in best of three. But the thing that balanced it in best of three was that in best of three, you still had to have a working sideboard to sideboard against your opponent. Otherwise you're just going to lose because your opponent's sideboarding against you and you're not sideboarding against them. So that keeps it balanced in best of three where the sideboard is actually needed. But in best of one, it was just cards that took things from your side board were just inherently better and they are still going to be inherently better in best of one but not as good anymore 
So that's essentially what they're going to say here. So I'm going to kind of skip through it. One thing I do want to mention is this is what sideboards are going to look like now. It'll have each card separated. So instead of it saying two Tormod script, it'll be Tormod script, Tormod script. And I assume that's to kind of show off the fact that these seven are the ones that are legal and best of one. And I like that you can build a deck with a best of one sideboard and then have your extended sideboard for when you go into best of three. I think that UI works really well. And then you can use the little arrows to jump them up and down. Uh, so for instance, this person has these cards in the sideboard for best of one and these for best of three and if you only play best of three this doesn't really change anything other than this um layout is slightly different but i like the way they did this so it's not oh i have to have it have a best of one and best of three version of my deck all right ward is gonna work just like you would expect uh except you know it has this little icon right here so get used to that icon uh in addition we learn just some little things like if you target this with a spell and then the spell gets countered you can still pay the three life uh for instance in this situation all right um we're gonna skip this part essentially just saying look at the mechanics next let's talk about mystical archive one of the most striking features of Strixhaven's campus is the Biblioplex. It's said to you can find every spell and magic with the most dangerous and powerful locked behind the Mystical Archive. So essentially they are alternate art, alternate frame versions of some of Magic's most iconic spells, and all of them are coming to MTG Arena, with a few exceptions that are banned. So uh, they are available in both limited packs, like they would be in a draft or you know with physical packs, and in the 8 card store packs. So essentially, I'm just going to quickly explain everything they say here. You can get them in both store packs and limited packs. In store packs, they replace one of the commons. So that means theoretically, instead of opening two uncommons, four commons, and a mythic, you could open a mythic, two uncommons, three commons, and another mythic. However, we do get some new probability details. For instance, uh, there's a 67% chance that it's an uncommon, which is really high. That means uh, like two out of three times, it is going to be a uncommon so every third pack you can expect to get a bonus rare mythic but that's not that bad i know a lot of people are talking about how this is very greedy and the fact that a lot of cards that aren't typically rare have been upshifted to rare for draft purposes um and i i do think that is you know fair to say that you're requiring a lot more wild cards out of players but I personally think it's a really good thing i mean just from a purely i'm opening strix havens value you know perspective this is amazing. You're getting extra cards. It means that I can be excited about not only expanding my standard collection, but also my exclusively historic selection, which is often a lot more fun because yes, old standard cards in historic are legal, but they're not as fun because I've already played with them. But when you introduce new cards like Grape Shot here, it'll be really cool. Either way, you have a 6.6% .6 chance of getting a mythic. Uh, so, you know, not amazing, but there is that chance that you get the mythic and I'm completely fine with that. This means you can open more than one uh, rare mythic, and then there's also the special Japanese alternate art variations. And so what we do learn in this little picture is that the card in your hand, uh, like on top of your library, in your graveyard, is going to look like this. But when you hover over it, it will look like this. So it'll look different depending on where you're hovering over it, and it works the same as Vorinclex. Me, personally, I kind of wish they just kind of always had it look like this, or had an option, uh, but it's fine. It just, it, it you know, in a lot of situations, like when it's on the battlefield, you can't even see the text anyway, so I think it's fine. It'll be interesting to see what these look like on the battlefield, though. Uh, and you can get these through, um, through, through, like, store packs. So yeah, they work just like Vorinclex. All right, so then they, they're talking about handling forbidden knowledge. Essentially, these cards are going to be in the game, but they are banned. The reason they're in the game in the first place is that they don't want to mess with how draft runs. So you can technically draft channel, which is an incredibly powerful spell, um, but you can't use it in historic. Now, they didn't say you can't use it in, say, historic brawl. Uh, some of these, I assume, will get banned in historic brawl, but I don't know if all of them will. For instance, I think Swords the Plowshare is completely appropriate for historic brawl. Maybe same thing with counter spell and lightning bolt. Um, so you might still be able to use these in other formats that are historic uh, so they're not completely useless but in terms of store packs you won't open any of these cards until you open four of every other mythical archive which is going to take a while to do um, but they do uh, have you know they, they're banned from the start obviously um, of course you know if you do draw them or draw them if you do draft them you are going to technically be drafting dud cards but not really you'll eventually be able to use them just in the short term they may not feel as good um 
and yeah so they'll appear last in your store boosters and if you pull them in limited that's i'm not gonna say your fault but it, you just get them um also they want to mention here and i want to mention here that they instead of saying here are all the cards we think are going to be problematic let's ban them which the list would be a lot higher they said let's ban the ones we know are going to be problematic and then we'll just release all of them and then just a warning they're more likely to get banned so if you go and you know it's fine to spend like four mythics on whatever one you want but then if you go and spend a bunch of mythics or rares on other cards to support that deck you could very quickly get banned uh your, your deck banned so if you're building a deck around a specific mystical archive card i would say be careful just because they said they are going to act quicker with these bans meaning it could literally just be one day there's not going to be banned and the next day oh they're banned or suspended i should say uh, which you would get your mythic wild card back or whatever uh, which also i think is really awesome for standard players if you don't play historic at all and you open up something like let's say grape shot and then let's say grape shot becomes a problem in historic it gets banned and all the standard players get rare wild cards so that is one advantage to having them be upshifted by the way um but just keep that in mind that they are more likely to get banned because they know that they're powerful cards they just want to see how what the environment looks like then they say it's available on iOS, which it's been available on iOS for a couple weeks. I'm honestly surprised they didn't wait for the launch for Strixhaven. They've, in the past, released new versions of the game with set launches so that they can kind of dual market them. Um, but yeah, we've had this for a little bit now. It's pretty great. Um, you can log on and get your Thopter. And yeah, that's it for the state of the game, but we're not done. We have MTG Arena announcements. Um, I am going to talk about everything after I talk about this. So we have... Uh, some information about things coming to the store. So let's talk about it. We have emotes, which, okay, emotes started on the Mastery Pass, then got moved to events, and are now in the store for 5,000 gold for three emotes. Um, they're interesting. I like the math here. It's a little hard to see with the white background. I think he is probably my favorite emote. Um, yeah, to each their own with the emotes. I don't know when I would necessarily be using the other two, but yeah, I will not be getting it. Either way, we also have the Mila bundle, which is really interesting. So it's 15,000 gold for a pet and the sleeve. And that's, I, if I'm not mistaken, normally pets are 20,000 gold, or are they 10? I don't remember what the normal price of a pet is. If the normal price of a pet is 10,000 gold or 20,000 gold, this is a really good deal. Uh, if it's not, then this is not a great deal because it's then 10,000 and then you're paying 5,000 extra for this sleeve. And it is looks like it, it's an exquisite one. However, I also want to mention this looks like it's a reskin of the Fey Fox pet from uh, Throne of Eldraine, like the one you got on the Mastery Pass. So it probably doesn't have any new animation. So I'd be wary of this pack. Next, we have the Strixhaven Borderless Planeswalker Bundle. You get all four of them borderless, which actually means you get, uh, you know, you get four, but then you also get two extra with Mila and Rowan both having a backside. And then we have the Borderless Founder Dragon, so you can get all five of the dragons um, for 5,000. It's a little interesting, I guess. No, I don't know. Uh, these four are, they cost more than the five of these cards, even though they're all mythics. But I guess you could say because these are modal double face, they're technically two extra cards. Either way, uh, those are being added. Uh, obviously, I can't tell you they're good or bad. It's really subjective. All right, here we have something kind of interesting, um, and you're not really going to be able to see it. So I'm going to go over here, and we're going to kind of view these one at a time. All right, so the one you can't see over here, and I don't know if there's much I can do to see make you see it. Here you go. Uh, just because of how the cropping of this works. It's Mystical Archive Styles White, and then you can expect, you know, I, I can now zoom out. Give me a sec. Sorry about this. This is really jank. Uh, Mystical Archive Styles Blue, and they all have different costs. So, like, blue uh, is the most expensive, with red being... Oh, there we go. Here's all of them. Uh, with red being the second most expensive. One thing I will mention is, if I'm not mistaken, I read this on Reddit, um, there is no Faithless Looting. I know people really hate the art for the normal Faithless Looting, and I thought, oh my gosh, they made the red one the second most expensive so that people who want the Faithless Looting thing have to pay for the whole bundle. But no, they're actually not here. So that makes me think it'll be part of an event later. Then we have the green one. And then what's interesting is we have the Forbidden Volumes one, which is all of the banned cards going for 2,400. Now, the fact that a lot of these are mythic is pretty crazy. So it's seven like rare and mythic card styles for 2,400 coins, but they're for cards you can't really use. 
So I'm glad they didn't price them at normal price. Uh, for instance, they say normal price would have been 4,800, which would have been the second most expensive uh, outside of blue. Um, but because you can't use them, they're pretty expensive. However, note if you know Legacy or Commander ever comes to historic comes to historic, comes to arena, these will be legal to use in those formats. And so if you really like these styles, it may be an investment. Or if you really like drafting, because these will show up in draft packs as well, you may want to consider getting yourself the forbidden volumes. So I would actually say this one's probably the most worth it one of all, and it's cards that aren't playable, which I think is kind of interesting. Just if older formats ever do come out, these are going to see play in them. Uh, and so that's kind of interesting. Either way, uh, let's jump down. We have upcoming events. Uh, they haven't updated this FNM at home thing, which concerns me. I think FNM at home is great, and it was introduced for the pandemic, but I would really love if they continued it into the future forever. Magic is associated with FNM, and I don't think it's that ridiculous to have FNM at home. Now, you might rename it to MTG Arena, Friday Night Magic, or whatever, or, uh, maybe not even call it Friday Night Magic, but just some event that's just like FNM at home. Uh, and if it does go away, I really hope we see the return of workshops that were introduced back in with Theros Beyond Death and then discontinued after FNM at home started. Quick draft, uh, they added Kaldheim, or not Kaldheim, sorry, Strixhaven to the schedule here. We have Arena Cube Draft, I believe we already had all this information. We have Turbo Draft, which I believe is new, uh, April 10th through the 15th, Theros Beyond Death. It essentially just makes all spells cost five less to cast. So it's like Omniscience Draft where everything's free, but it's not free. Um, and actually, the fact that Theros Beyond Death is kind of important because there are a lot of multi-color like color noted cards just because it is a devotion-based set. Then we have Mythic Qualifier Weekend being April 10th and 11th, and then we have the launch events for Strixhaven. So that's everything they had to announce here. And then we have Strixhaven on MTG Arena Digital. I'm not really going to talk much about this. Essentially, this is just explaining card-specific interactions. And one thing I didn't know, think about, really, is the fact that they have to, like, program in all the Mystical Archives, including ones that aren't being used, like Channel, uh, and things like Tezzert's Gambit, which is being used. But, like, we've never had Phyrexian Mana. We've never had, like, an effect like Channel. Uh, so they kind of talk about it here. I'll leave, like, most of these up so you can kind of read through them as I talk about my thoughts on everything they announced today. All right, so overall, we got a lot of news, and I love communication, so that is going to be a win from me. However, I was really hoping for a look into the future and maybe the announcement of a new feature. Uh, I was really hoping for spectating, but it sounds like that's not happening anytime soon, if ever. But, you know, new features, even if they just said, hey, we're now, we now have, like, concept drawings of what a four-player game would look like, or, oh, you know, Pioneer Masters, where you're going to spoil one card from it or tell you when roughly it's coming out. Um, so, yeah, I think that would have been really nice. Um, one thing I did skip over in here is they said that they would be doing State of the Games for every State of the Game, um, for every, like, new set announcement, uh, and I believe they actually say that in this one. I don't remember. They said it in one of them. I read through it. Um... Yeah, I think, I, I don't remember. I'll scroll through here as I talk and see if I can find it. Um, oh yeah, here it is. We'll be back with another State of the Game with Adventures in Forgotten Realm in mid-July or whenever we have big news to share. And I don't know if that means, hey, we might have big news before then or if they're saying Adventures of the Forgotten Realm will be next and then it will be maybe sometime before Innistrad. But yeah, whenever they have big news, they're going to do, do a State of the Game. One thing I find really weird is that they consider Strixhaven bigger news than them launching on iOS. iOS, the iOS and full mobile release got a an arena announcement but this got a state of the game i think what they consider a big deal and what most of the community considers a big deal seems very different um i was hoping that we would have something like big like they said oh we're saving state of the game for big announcements so i thought they were teasing a big announcement so i had my expectations up a little too high in my opinion so that's kind of my fault but going into the future this is kind of what you can expect uh i want to know what you guys think about this new system of announcements every week and then state of the games when set come out i think it works pretty well uh I, the state of the game is not the most disappointing we've ever had it's kind of hard to be when we have a set release um but yeah if you enjoyed this video hit that like button subscribe to stay up to date with everything magic the gathering for instance i'm doing more strict haven spoilers later today i will see you in the next one bye